And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Subatomic. Subatomic is made by Genius Games, which is one of the most important board game companies in existence today. And the reason for that is, a lot of game companies make games based on fantasy and escapist themes, and that's fine. But Genius Games takes actual scientific themes and designs board games around them. Not only that, unlike most other companies that do such things, their games are actually very fun. This one here is Subatomic. Now the last several games from Genius I've been thrilled with, so I was very excited about this one, an atom building game. And this is a deck building game where you'll have your own deck of cards and building these cards, trying to build different atoms to accomplish, to get points and such. So it teaches you a little bit about atom building and about atomic weight, things like that. But it's also a fun game. Spoilers, I guess. Let's take a look. The object with Subatomic is to get the most points. You're going to do that by building different atoms here. So Boron, for example, is going to need five protons, six neutrons, two electrons, and it's going to be worth 11 points at the end of the game. And so you're trying to get these points. Also, there are, uh, players are going to have a chance to put tokens over here, and whoever has the most tokens in these end goals will get that many bonus points at the end of the game. Players are going to have their own starting deck of cards, which is going to be made up of four down quarks, four up quarks, and three photon gamma rays. You'll be shuffling this and drawing five cards. Now, on a player's turn, they're going to be able to use their cards in a variety of ways. There's different actions you can take. You can take as many actions as you want, but at some point, you're going to run out of cards. Now, one thing that you can do is you can simply discard any number of cards face down, not using them for what is on the one side of them, to get an energy. Energy can be saved from turn to turn and is used to pay a lot of different costs in the game. Another thing you can do is you can buy these cards that are out here. So for example, to buy a neutron, I would need to play two down quarks and an up quark, which I happily have. So I would put these three cards into my discard pile along with this, but I would also have to pay two energy. So if this was my opening hand, I could say, okay, these two I'm going to spend for energy, and then I'm going to pay these three cards. I'll take this card and add it to my deck. Now when this shows up, I have a neutron that I'll be able to use on future turns. And I might you need the neutron because to buy this card here, I need to spend two neutrons and two energy, as well as another energy for the row it's in. Of course, whenever something's bought, everything's going to slide over, making it easier to buy in the future. Now, why do I want to buy these protons and energy cards? Some of them are useful. This gives me two protons or two energy. This gives me two protons and two neutrons, but I got to pay two energy every time I use it. This gives me a one proton and one neutron. So there's some, these are useful, and that's because you're going to use them down here. Whenever you want to, if I pay this neutron card, I can say I now have one neutron. And then if I play it again, I get a two neutrons. And I can have up to six neutrons, five protons, and I can have up to two electrons. And you can get those by playing these cards. You can also just play the cards that are needed to build them. If I have this in my hand, I can play this to give myself one neutron. And so you're going to build this area up here because these, these can't be used to buy these cards. These are used to build the atoms. Remember up here, uh, this costs five protons, six neutrons, and two electrons. If I have those, I'll spend them all, and I'll take this card. When I take that card, not only am I going to get 11 points at the end of the game, I'm going to take two of my cubes, and each player is going to have 10 of these cubes, and I'm going to place them on two different things here to try and win these bonuses at the end of the game, but I cannot place them on the one I just got, Boron, because this, at the end of the game, these are going to give you points for each Boron card that you have, which could, could be great. So you can't take the Boron card and then immediately put them here. Also, if I'm the first person on one of these, I can take these, and it's going to let me, gives me basically a free action. It lets me annihilate for free. This one's just worth two points at the end of the game. Speaking of annihilating, there's a cost up here to annihilate. You basically will just pay a certain amount of energy, and you can annihilate two cards from your hand, which means taking them out of the game. 
See, the game essentially has you going through your deck of cards, and when you're done, you discard all your cards, you'll draw five more. When you run out of cards, you'll shuffle your discard pile. But you're going to get better and better cards, so you might want to get rid of some of these smaller, weaker cards, and that's why you would annihilate them. Not to mention, besides annihilating cards, there are other cards that you can buy up here. There's going to be different scientists for each game, and these just have an energy cost, although the energy cost is going to go up depending on how late you wait to buy the card. And when these show up in your hand, they just give you a special ability. For example, Mr. Rutherford here lets you draw two cards, or you can draw three and give everyone else one. Marie Curie lets you look at someone else's hand and copy two of their subatomic cards, and all other players can discard a card and draw a new card. So these cards, um, can give you special abilities and they're going to be different from game to game. And that is essentially the game. You're just going to keep going until one person runs out of their cubes, which means they built five of these. At that point you finish out the round and everyone's going to add their points from these. You'll also get points here if you have the most points per each card of that type that you have, plus any other little bonuses that you might have got over the course of the game. And whoever has the most points is the winner. As with all genius games, the card quality here is really good. Also, you can see it's really bright and colorful. You have two different decks. The decks are really easy to tell apart because of the symbol at the top. And, you know, these cards, they're good quality. They look bright. They look cheerful. It's a very serious scientific theme, but it's very silly. Your boards themselves have the actions listed clearly on them, showing you how to make up the different atoms, showing you how you can use your energy in other ways, like you can pay one energy to swipe a row, two energy just to draw another card if you need to, and annihilate cards. Uh, it's up here, the boards, the atoms look really cool. It also shows very, you know, these people, they don't make fun of them at all. They're very serious folks. The whole thing is just really nice. The, the energy is okay. There's a really nice first player starter symbol. And then there's these little bubbly tokens that are used to keep track of how many atoms you have. It's just a really great production, especially considering how small the box is. I like it. And there you go. That's Subatomic. Fantastic game. Fantastic components. Great look. It is not a complex game. By which I mean, I don't think after playing 20 times, you're going to be like, ooh, let's try a 20th different strategy. No, it's fairly straightforward, but it does give you a lot of options. There's going to be differences from game to game with scientists, and I wouldn't mind if they release more scientists as time goes by to add even more variety up there. But the basic, hey, I got these uh, quarks, and I'm going to be using them to get these electrons and the protons and neutrons, and I'll be using them to get atoms. It's fairly straightforward and basic, and it's essentially a race game because you're sitting there trying to figure out do I want to change these into a single proton? Every time that proton comes up, am I just going to start using that to move up the protons on my stockpile? Or am I going to get weight and forget the stockpile and just try to get a really good deck and then quickly run through my stockpile as fast as I can to get these atoms? Or do I want to get the atoms early to get those bonuses? Not deep decisions, but good solid ones. This is a great family game. This is a game that not only teaches you great science, but also teaches you great game mechanisms. It's an introduction to atom building, and it's an introduction to deck building. And that's a great combo. For those who are fans of heavy deck building games, and maybe you've played Dominion with all its expansions and Thunderstone and all that, you might come to this and go, oh, this seems a little light for my taste. But light isn't always a bad thing, and in this case, it's fantastic. This is like, I hesitate to say like a perfect game but it's perfect for what it needs to be. And that is a game that I can say to people, hey, you should try this game out. This is a game in which you can teach your kids some scientific stuff and they're gonna have a lot of fun. And so are you. And you don't even have to teach kids. You can just get together with some other adults and play it. And it's in a small size, it's a nice production, good price point. Overall, I'm very happy with this. I wish more companies did what Genius Games did, but at the same time, they're kind of pioneering this field of making educational fun, edutainment, and actually mean it. So Subatomic, another great game from the line of Genius Games. Highly recommend it. Get it. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.